close to the action, luxurious seating, easy access, and the ultimate automobile parking facilities. All this supported with excellent dining and snack facilities and other necessities for massive crowds of paying supporters. This vision was supported of two bond issues by far-sighted Harris County taxpayers. Finance construction of a stadium for lease to the Houston Sports Association for 40 years at fees that could amortize the cost. After initial delays, work was begun in earnest with barely two years for contractors to make delivery of this dramatic prototype stadium. ...between architects, contractors, and suppliers enabled a veritable flood of skilled workmen, machines, steel, and other materials to commence. Smooth as the works of a fine watch, the sequencing of temporary erection towers for the dome, supporting outer walls for the stadium proper, forms and concrete for retaining walls and structures, all poured into the massive hole South Main Street where a quarter million cubic yards of soil had been excavated. Soaring steel towers reminiscent of derricks in the neighboring oil fields rapidly take shape as false work to support erection of a dome structure itself. Opposite sections are built simultaneously in anticipation of coordinated erection of dome members yet to come. three levels by eliminating the heavy internal buttressing normally required. This is the crown block, a virtual keystone at the very center of the dome which will support the tons of thrust from all directions exerted on it by weight of the entire dome structure. Primary radiating bolted to the 12 facets of the crown block, which is being hoisted to position atop the central erection tower. rest on temporary jacks 208 feet above the final playing field level. From the precisely located center, meticulous and constant surveys assure precision locations of every element in the stadium structure. Many survey crews simultaneously maintain the control lines as construction advances to receive outer ends of the dome's structural members. This is a lamella section, the product of infinite research and calculations prior to its painstaking fabrication. A curving structural member which will be joined with others to form self-supporting spherical dome. lamella section is 120 feet long with a depth of five feet. They were prefabricated at Orange, Texas, brought to Houston by barge on the Intracoastal Canal and trucked to the site with a police escort. Real traffic stoppers. The first lamella section is hoisted into place by cranes with 280 foot booms to begin construction of the dome framework outward from the center. Ends of each lamella section are critically placed atop jacks on each of the towers, assuring maintenance of the design pitch for the roof structure. A wrap section and the outward blossoming array begins taking shape. The umbrella-like structure was a great attraction to the press and to local sightseers. It seemed difficult for some to understand how these members would connect with the tension ring on the outer walls. Almost superhuman daily coordination and planning for flow of materials and operations were required to provide for continuing smooth progress of erection, to prevent bottlenecks, and to meet the short completion schedule. Spacewalks were a daily occurrence with scores of sure-footed high iron workers. A second outer ring of erection towers accepted the midsections to maintain the precise dome contour.
dome members are tension bolted with only 12 welded joints in the roof structure itself. As corresponding opposite sides of the pie-shaped segments are placed, the imposing 642 feet clear span of the roof becomes visible. Over 50% greater than any previous structure in the... significant day, a gathering of Harris County officials, Judge Roy Hoffines and the Houston Sports Association officers, architects, contractors, union officials, suppliers, and news media to celebrate placing of the final lamella section in the massive roof structure. And surely, no such occasion can go unmarked by speeches. Up it goes, the final 120-foot long piece, a perfect fit, ensured by a trial run the evening before, and the last lift of the exceptionally long-boomed cranes. So the designers justified early placement of some of the precast seating sections to check sight lines previously reckoned only on paper. The completed dome structure could now be freed of the supporting jacks on towers and at the tension ring. Design calculations forecast a deflection of three and one quarter inches. Actual deflection with the jacks removed was three and one sixty. A genuinely a construction performance. Construction towers were then disassembled and removed from the arena to provide an unobstructed work area for the next operations. A few six predicted that as the towers came down, so would the dome. Thousands of bulb tees were welded into place to support the rigid roof decking panels and the framed plastic skylights. Lacy geometry of the dome's point proved of interest for architects, engineers, and photographers. Work begins in earnest, pouring the re entry decks and ramps throughout the nine floor levels, clear around a half long circle of the stadium. These cantilevered tiers support upper seating. There were also a few predictions that they would not support the weight as thousands of fans stood and cheered when the Astros hit a homer. Great workhorses at the lower level of refrigeration, which maintains a constant atmosphere of 72 degrees temperature and 50% relative humidity to the dome. Miles of ductwork and 24 of these giant blowers circulate two and a half million cubic feet of air per minute throughout the stadium. A quarter million cubic feet per minute is exhausted out the top of a dome to carry off hot air and smoke. An intricate and seemingly endless pneumatic tubing system connects the advanced sales and other ticket offices to quickly provide patrons the proper tickets for their selection of seat location. A pride of workmanship was apparent during all phases of construction. Each person seemed to work tirelessly to a schedule and avoid delays. Beds of backfill placed around the waterproof retaining wall the space-saving anchor cables to work. Special forms are used for the board outer columns of a building. Exterior walls are constructed of precast concrete panels in sections. 25 feet long and 7 feet wide. Some of them are as much as 60% voids, a tribute to the precast concrete fabricators. Realization begins with placement of the clear lucite skylights. In all, 4,976 of them were installed. Each skylight is 7 feet two in and three feet four inches wide formed with two lucite clear on top and prismatic embossed below with a dead air space between for insulation. Unusual means were employed in delivering the stacks of skylight panel to their installation sites atop the dome. The skylight pattern was established to accelerate water runoff from torrential rains which can fall on the nine and one half acres of roof and which rains out events scheduled in old fashion. A 
a long-awaited answer for the architects and designers. With but one roof segment covered by skylights, perfusion and spread of light covers the playing field and stands in a bath of shadowless, natural light of high intensity. This is the answer. Tracks below ground level on which the field stand sections revolve to convert the seating from baseball to football modes for the best possible viewing of each sport. The last lofty lift inside the stadium, hoisting precast seating decks up to the ninth skybox level. Instant and sure communications provide accuracy and prevent accidents for the daring but sure-footed workmen. Panels pulled on the site are hoisted to form the east wall of the stadium. This work is limited to days of low wind velocity to prevent the huge sheets from sailing away across the ferry. Scaffolding reaches up to the full height of the wall, so working at each level can simultaneously attach the panels with pneumatic pop rivet guns. And the view from the top. The old temporary stadium is in the foreground. Next, the South Main skyline, the medical center, and Houston's downtown skyline in the background. 25 to 30 mile winds made working out on top pretty exciting. The crowned skylight panels are self-cleaning from natural rainfall. A view from the crown block at the center, insight, and a look forward to the playing field, 208 feet below. The light and sound gondola, 64 feet in diameter, is yet to be hooked up to the dome. The red color is but one layer of the Hypalon roof system, which completely waterproofs the solid portion of the dome. is completed, a single air-conditioned room, nine and one-half acres in size. Duct insulation in exposed areas being completed. Vast networks of insulated ducts distribute the filtered, deodorized, conditioned air throughout every level, every space and every room in the gigantic structure. The playing field is made ready with thousands of cubic yards of sterilized, specially prepared topsoil covering the sandy base. It's leveled and careful stadium, and to provide a playing surface of unparalleled quality. Movable stand sections get their finishing touches, tiered and contoured to the use of the permanent surrounding levels of seating. 5,000 on each of the two movable sections of field boxes. These, like the others, are full holstered, individual theater types in a rainbow of colors. Stadium. An intensely complex job in itself was riveting proper seat numbers to assuring patrons of the correct seat for their ticket and easication of their seating preference. The Astrodome, the luck patrons in absolute comfort without a single view obstructing column. The better to see by at night or on cloudy days. 1960 high efficiency lights above the arena floor to provide a lighting level greater than any other stadium ever built shadowless and a delight for color motion pictures and television without any added light. 300 foot candles average in the playing area. And the better to hear by, 13 gigantic speaker baffles are suspended from the dome around the field for uniform sound distribution in principal areas. Together with additional hundreds of smaller speakers, to distribute sound of balanced level in every seating promenade and room area. A total of 7,000 audio watts of quality output in the system, all fed through a time delay tape loop mechanism to eliminate echoes or reverberation. The master control for operation of the complete air conditioning system in the world's largest room. Monitoring and immediate reporting of temperature and relative humidity at more than 400 points throughout the stadium, at all nine levels and in all room and service areas. An instant readout system with projected films of schematic circuits and block diagrams of all units provides for immediate servicing and compensation. 
A phenomenally complex system with immediate response for minute control of the massive boilers, turbines and compressors, chillers, fans and filters. Inside air pressure is maintained a fraction above outside atmospheric pressure to ensure ease of door opening. In emergency, instant air release locks permit all doors to be opened without delay or panic. The big push to open the Astrodome to the public for the start of baseball season. Endless details to complete. Final installation of flooring, fixtures, dusting and cleaning, and shelves to stock with souvenirs. Meanwhile, there's action in the fabulous Astrodome Club, a plushly decorated 640-seat private dining club for Astros season ticket holders, the ultimate in stadium club luxury. And parking, instant parking for 30,000 cars, more private parking than any stadium in existence or even being planned. Rapid control so the lot can empty in 20 minutes out the principal access thoroughfares to the city. And signs of the times to guide 50 to 60,000 people quickly and directly to their seats with a minimum travel distance, each color coded for respective seating levels and color matched to tickets held by the patrons. Radio and TV hookups made to carry the news. Photographers' darkrooms made ready, eight in all, for immediate processing of color or black and white. And the wire photo machines tested for picture transmission over the world. Action pictures can appear in San Francisco newspapers while the game is still in progress. Vacuum clean the 46,000 upholstered seats. Get the field ready. Complete and test the $2 million spectacular scoreboard to entertain and inform the fans. The Astros make a first tryout of their sensational new playpen. Yes, even indoors, the ball breaks. Some hit the ball, but no one has ever closely approached the top, even with a fungo bat. And the fielding is as usual. Harris County Judge Bill Elliott and the County Commissioners unveil the plaque dedicating the Harris County Domed Stadium, a pioneer landmark promising excitement, adventure, and entertainment for the public for years to come. The rush for tickets begins. Unprecedented advanced sales, not only for opening games of the Houston Astros, but for the season, demonstrates public support of this dramatic venture from the outset. Parking areas start to fill as fans arrive early for the opening game. Fans delivered by trams from their cars. Easy entry to seating levels by gentle ramps or by the two banks of high-speed escalators. Wide, pleasant, and well-lighted concourses. Finally, inside, a look at more than 50,000 paying guests settled in their comfortable padded seats at 72 degrees temperature and 50% relative humidity. No rain, sun, wind, dust, perspiration, splinters, hard benches, mosquitoes, or snow. It's the Astrodome. Inside, a world of its own. Opening night celebrated with bands, pep squad girls, and speeches. Voices of thousands raised in the national anthem. And settling down in the world's first completely air-conditioned indoor stadium. The first ball pitched in indoor play goes to the Hall of Fame at Cooperstown, New York. Special guests. The President and Lady Bird Johnson in the private box of Astros owner Judge Roy Hoffines. Action on the playing field in a manner never before seen, with unparalleled luxury and skyboxes high above at the top level of the stadium. 24 to 30 private box seats with a private club room. Many styles of decor to suit individual tastes. 
built-in refrigerators and ice makers, built-in closed-circuit TV and private restrooms. Really, some kind of ballpark. Baseball in the daytime, a high fly ball up toward the skylighted dome. And another problem must be solved. Glare. Fielders had difficulty following the high balls. What to do? Coat the skylights. A force of workers quickly sprayed a white acrylic coating to bond on top of the clear plastic skylight panels, thus reducing the overall light level and consequent glare. Now a glistening white dome is presented for the outside world to see. Fame of this great structure and its facilities is spread to all the world through the first intercontinental live TV transmission by Early Bird Satellite. Variety in the Astrodome. A Boy Scout Circus. 50,000 seats are filled with cheering, applauding, proud parents and friends watching the spectacle of 10,000 cubs and thousands of Boy Scouts. Visitors from far off lands also come to the Astrodome in the form of Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, playing to many times greater houses at each performance than ever before in their 95 year history. All the traditional glitter of performers, animals, and acrobats of the greatest show on earth, most assuredly in the greatest show place on earth. Football season comes along. Rotate the field box seating to provide the best seats on the 50-yard line. The same best seats which were by first and third bases for baseball. A single 10-horsepower electric motor moves each stand section with its 5,000 seats to its new position, parallel to the football sidelines. A kickoff and the usual bone-crushing thrills of football. The atmosphere and the bands and dancing girls form better in this new world for sports. It's as easily converted back for baseball. In fact, with the overlap of baseball and football seasons, four changes back and forth are necessary. The first season of operation. The Astrodome. The world's greatest pleasure palace, a culmination of the foresight, daring, faith, and dreams of the people of Harris County, a faith supported by voter approval of two bond issues, a reality in tribute to them, the architects and engineers who dared explore the unknown, and the builders who meticulously transformed their blueprints into steel and tree. Its total cost of $31,600,000 is but a portion of the inestimably real value to the area's economy. Is the Astrodome truly the eighth wonder of the world? <laughs>